Okay, so I'm here with uh, Vicky Neal at the Centre for Mathematical Sciences in Cambridge. Um, Vicky, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hello, I'm Vicky Neal. I'm the Whitehead Lecturer at the Mathematical Institute and Balliol College, the University of Oxford. So my job is teaching undergraduates and getting involved in outreach, public engagement with maths, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, first off, could you tell us what you like most about doing mathematics? Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> um, I really like the challenge, whether that's trying to solve a difficult problem, whether it's understanding some difficult concepts. Um, the harder it is, the better the buzz of satisfaction when you have solved it, when you've connected the ideas, you've understood it, you've had an idea to solve a problem. Um, that's a fantastic feeling. Mm. So even if it's hard and some people might be scared of it, it's really, really worth sticking to it. Then yeah, it's definitely. To... I mean, some problems, some problems are too hard for me to be able to solve with my current level of knowledge or something. But a problem that I think I might have a reasonable chance of attacking is definitely worth persisting, persevering, because... Yeah. The payoff when it works out is great, and sometimes it doesn't work, and well, never mind. Mm. Doesn't okay. matter. So, could you tell us one or two of your favourite mathematical moments? Yeah, so I have a really clear memory of something that happened when I was a uh, sixth former, when I was doing my A levels. And I remember suddenly realising that I could try to answer a problem in two ways. And I just had this moment of kind of terror of what if they give different answers? I mean, you sort of hope they wouldn't, but, but, but. I've got these two ways of thinking about this thing, and I just kind of had to grab a pencil and paper right then and just spend a couple of minutes kind of checking that they gave the same answer. And what was so amazing about that was that I suddenly understood how these two different ways linked up, like that kind of connection between them. And that memory has really stuck with me, um, much more than it would have done if somebody had explained to me, you can do this problem in these two ways. That kind of realisation I could piece, the, piece it together for myself was amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I guess another um, quite strong memory I have that for me kind of captures the, the experience I might have of solving a problem was when I was working on a problem um, I was going to be teaching. Um, so third year graph theory problem. Um, maybe I won't go into the, mm. the, the details of the problem right now. Um, and it was the kind of problem where it says, is it always true that whatever? Um, so either I was going to have to give a reason, like a proof, an explanation of why it's always true that this thing happens, or I was going to have to kind of construct an example, call it a counterexample, that shows that sometimes it doesn't happen, because look, here is an example where it doesn't mm. happen. And the question didn't tell me which of those I was going to have to do, so it's kind of, well, I've, I've got to try it. And it really wasn't obvious whether this thing was always going to be true or not. So I spent quite a long time, maybe an hour or two, um, thinking about why it should be true, trying to prove it, trying to give this explanation of why it was always true. And like, I just had this unbelievably beautiful idea. It's kind of related to something else on the problem sheet. I thought, this is it, this is it. I've got this solution, and I did some scribbling, and it all worked out, and it was great. And I thought, well, I'll just write it out carefully, make sure I've got the details right. And it suddenly hit me that the argument was wrong. It's kind of, oh, you know, it was so disappointing. And then I thought, well, if that proof doesn't work, because that proof is so perfect, if that proof doesn't work, obviously the result's false. There must be an example that shows that this isn't always the case. Mm. So then I spent another couple of hours drawing little pictures on my piece of paper, trying very hard to come, come up with this example. And I really couldn't find an example. And then I got very kind of frustrated and you know, wandered around the house a bit, kind mm. of being cross and, oh, what am I going to do about this? I thought, well, I'll go back to that original attempt at a proof because the idea was so lovely. I just mm. didn't want to give up on it. I think, well, why exactly doesn't it work? What goes wrong? And when I looked at the argument really carefully, this is a really good thing to do when you're doing maths. Kind of why doesn't the argument work for this problem? And when I realised really precisely, when I pinpointed what the problem was, I realised how I could fix the argument. So it was always true. The beautiful proof became even more beautiful when I sort of found a way to make it correct. But mm. the experience of spending a couple of hours looking for counterexamples was actually really important in that journey. It, mm. it sort of might seem like wasted time, but actually I learned a lot more about the kinds of objects I was dealing with and mm. how they worked and so on. So that was really important in my journey on that problem, I think. So it's a real, it's a real experience. It's real going backwards and forwards and barring yourself into Yeah, and into it's always problem. hard to know when to decide, you know, to give up on an idea and try something else and all of that kind it's of thing. It's an adventure, I guess basically. It, yeah. it, it did feel like a journey. That, that, yeah. that, my recollection of that afternoon I spent working on this problem is very much like that kind of adventure and well I could go down this path or I could go down this path and how am I going to decide and 
well, is this a dead end? Do I need to turn around and go back? All of that, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So um, since we're talking about adventures and journeys, I mean, how important do you think it is to be creative in doing mathematics? Yeah, incredibly important at the same time that I'm not quite sure that I know what creativity is. It sort of feels like a slightly overused word. I mean, when you're doing maths, it's really important that you're technically mm. comfortable with what you're doing and that you're creative. And the creative bit sounds much more exciting than the technical proficiency, although they're actually both potentially really interesting. But for me, creativity is incredibly important and that comes in different ways. So that might be generating lots of ideas. So like when you're working on a problem and you look at this thing, I've got no idea how to start. And then you sort of play around and then you start to have a few ideas. And you have to have this kind of fearlessness, I think. So you sort of have these ideas and sometimes you sort of, in order to really get engaged with the problem, you have to be incredible, sometimes really brave because 99% of these ideas won't work out. And you have to kind of reconcile yourself to knowing that, well, it doesn't matter if these ideas don't work out. Even if I spend three hours thinking really hard about this idea, or even three months if it's a research problem, and then I discover it doesn't work, I've still learnt about the problem. That's still going to help me, like my playing around with the trying to find examples for this graph theory problem I was telling you about. It, that's not wasted time because it's all learning about it, but it can be quite hard to throw yourself into trying out an idea when there's always this little voice in the back of your head saying, it might not work. Um, but also making connections. I think that could be a really creative activity in maths, kind of finding similarities in two seemingly different situations and then unpicking, well, what, what is that connection between them? Or two different ways to answer the same problem, like I was mentioning earlier, and why are those two ways related? You know, what, what, what underlies those? Those are really mathematical things to be doing, kind of exploring the structure, but it can take a real kind of leap of insight to think, well, maybe this thing over here might be connected with this apparently totally different thing over here. So mm. I think creativity is incredibly important. Mm. Oh, thank you very much.